Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my Venus flytraps here. So you've seen probably recently my big ones, my giant ones at the back here. They were planted quite recently and they put on a huge amount of growth actually since the last video. Uh, I'll show you a picture now of what these used to look like just a few weeks back. So as you can see they put on a lot of new growth, really nice green colour to the growth, quite a dark green whereas the, the one that's been left outside it's a much lighter green colour. There's not much I need to do in these ones. I need to just gently tease away any of these stems that have died off. So you can see there, there's one of the larger ones on the Darwin variety has died off. So I'm just going to cut that off because it does feel a bit too secure to pull off by hand. So I'll remove that there. Um, the other traps, there's still a bit of yellow in them so I'm not going to take them off yet. But otherwise, plenty of new growth. Uh, you can definitely see the difference now with the Darwin being really tall. There's some very tall traps starting to come and the B52 being a lot more compact in size but you can see there the traps are really quite large if I compare my finger next to that one compared with these ones here it's quite a size difference um, the overall plant size probably about the same but the traps are certainly larger and these plants will hopefully get a bit, lot bigger too because these are just coming out of their spring dormancy and they're quite young plants this one however I've had on the balcony all winter long and it's looking quite poorly at the moment the reason for this is it's just coming out of its winter dormancy, so it's got a lot of dead material, a lot of traps that have died off over winter. So all I need to do is go around very carefully pulling off any of these dead traps to make sure that it's got space for the new plants to, to grow through. Also if I leave the dead traps there's a risk that they could become mouldy, and if they become mouldy there's always that risk that they could transmit that mould and, and the other traps that are healthy could start dying as well. So I'll just clear this all up. And it will also make the appearance look much tidier. So there we are, that's a lot of the dead material taken off. This Venus flytrap does seem to have split into a couple of plants. There seems to be a rosette over here on the side and also another rosette there. So it's probably two plants now. And it's doing what it does every year, which is to send up a flower spike. These two also sent up flower spikes this year, but I nipped them off because if the plant flowers, it puts more energy into the seeds, less energy into its traps, generally weakens the plant. But um, because this plant, I'm not too bothered about it. This is just a standard Venus fly trap, very easy to get. I'm quite happy just to allow this one to flower, just because I've never really seen a Venus fly trap flower. I've grown Venus fly traps for several years, but I've never let them flower because I've always tried to make sure that they stay as strong as possible. So I'll let this flower develop. I'll actually also make sure that I have it on a time-lapse camera so you can see it growing. Now from what I can gather, these actually grow very tall, probably about a foot tall. The reason for that is uh, they, they live in a boggy environment. They need to have this well above the, the, uh, the, the ground level to attract flying insects to pollinate the flowers. Another reason why it needs to be so high is it often floods in the bog. So if it was um, very low down next to the height of the traps, it would maybe get flooded by water periodically and then the insects wouldn't be able to pollinate it. And as it's very critical that it gets pollinated, um, in a very small window of time because most flowers they only last a few days and so if it's not pollinated straight away uh, what will happen is uh, it'll just die off and it'll be past the time for pollination. It also stops the water from washing away the pollen and lastly it also keeps the insects away from the traps. You don't want the insects to be coming right into the traps and then eaten because then they can't pollinate the flower. So that's another one, reason why it grows such long flower stems as opposed to the rest of the plant which stays very short and small. So this should really perk up now. Um, it's been outside the whole time, so it, that's why it's looking so rough. And Venus flytraps always look really quite uh, sickly and unhealthy first thing in spring. This is going to put on a lot of strong growth, especially in the, um, in the flower stalk. The, now, there is, as I say, there seems to be two plants. So the plant that's flowering, if it is certainly two plants, the plant that's flowering won't put on as much growth as a plant that isn't flowering. So it'll be interesting to see if you can tell a difference between the two plants. Um, it'll also be interesting to see how less vigorous it is with a flower stalk as opposed to these ones which don't have a flower stalk. So I'll put this under quite a high intensity grow light to make sure that it grows quite well. It needs plenty of light, these, these Venus fly traps are something, a uh, plant that likes a lot of sunlight. I need to look up though and see if, I, if it can self-pollinate or not. If it can self-pollinate then I will try propagating the seeds. If it can't self-pollinate then I'll just uh, enjoy the flowers and I won't have any seeds to, to sow. But I'll give you guys an update in a, in a few weeks time and I'll leave you now with a time lapse of the flower growing and hopefully as I say you'll see some of the new traps coming up as well. 